What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to obfuscate our Python code for code privacy. So let us get right into it. All right, so Python is an interpreted language and not a compiled language, which means we don't take the code and compile it to a binary file, we take the code and the code is what we're running on our system. So when I want to share my Python program with you, my script with you, I basically have to provide you the code of that script, not a binary file, even though technically it's possible to somewhat compile Python files. Usually you don't do that. So what you do is you ship the Python code itself. And of course, obfuscation, which is what we're going to talk about in this video today is not really a solution to the whole privacy problem, because everyone that has your obfuscated code, if they spend enough time, they can deobfuscate it and see what's happening. But if you want to have at least some level of privacy where you at least say, okay, it's not obvious right away, what my code is doing, and it's harder to see what my code is doing, then this might be interesting to you. So then obfuscation might be interesting to you. And today we're going to learn about a particular tool, uh, which is called I don't know how it's pronounced Oxiri or Oxiri or something like that. And basically what this does is it takes ordinary Python code and it turns it into that which is functionally, uh, functionally equivalent. So it basically has the same functionality. But you can see it looks very confusing. So if you get this code here, you can easily see what it's doing. And if you get this code here, you basically have no idea what it's doing unless you spend some time to decipher the individual uh, argument. So again, the code is here in in text form. So you have the pure code, you have the full functionality of the program in Python code, but you don't have the variable names, you don't have all the explanations. So basically, you have to, yeah, use your logical thinking and combination skills to figure out what's happening here, which is kind of difficult at times. So this is what this tool is useful for you're not really uh, protecting your Python code, you're not really hiding your Python code, you're just obfuscating it in a way that makes it very hard to see what's happening here. So this here is an ordinary program, we can also load different pr uh, programs here, and you can see what happens. And one of my recent videos on this channel was about coding a mastermind game. So here I have the Python file of this mastermind game, or actually, I'm going to open it up in Vim. So mastermind py that is the code of my application. So I have, uh, yeah, basically colors, a code length attempts, and then we try to guess the code. And what I did with that tool is I just open it up in or I just I just put in the code. So mastermind to py. And that is what I get out of it. Now, the important thing is I have a lot of strings here. Strings are not going to be changed because strings are what actually happens in the game, of course. So the message that I print has to be the same. So I still have to say welcome to mastermind, try to guess the color sequence, the code has uh, whatever colors and stuff like that. But you can see all the variable names here are obfuscated. It's not very easy to see uh, what's happening here. So what I can do basically is I can let's open this with a text editor, I can copy all of the code here, and I can go to the website, I can basically copy paste it. The only thing I want to keep here is the all keyword. So I want to keep all equals an empty list. Um, and then I can basically remove all of the code that exists here already, I can put in my own code, I can click obfuscate, and then you can see what's happening here. So you can see we have um, import random, of course, it's not going to choose a different library. But you can see all the variables are encoded as uh, yeah, as numbers or number digit combination, whatever. Uh, you have some options down here. So you can remove doc strings, uh, you can re rename default and non default parameters. One interesting thing is, if for some reason, you want to keep one of the names, uh, you can say, for example, I want to keep colors. And then I can obfuscate again, and you can see that colors will not be encoded or obfuscated. Um, so yeah, this is just a very nice tool that you can use to obfuscate your code. Again, it doesn't really solve the problem of people having your code but it makes it way, way harder for them and sometimes even impossible to de obfuscate what's happening here. Um, so yes, of course, they they have the same code as you have, but they don't really understand that the code length is equal to four, they understand this thing is equal to four, and then they have to see, okay, where is this thing occurring again? And what it's uh, what is the functionality? So they have to spend a lot of time deciphering your code. So this is something that can be very nice for code privacy. 
So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.